Hey everyone, Robin from Backscatter here. We've been out shooting the new Sony A7R4 full frame mirrorless camera in the crystal clear wide angle paradise of Little Cayman and the macro-tastic black sands of Bali. We wanted to figure out if the new high resolution 61 megapixel sensor was worth all the hype and to see how this camera stacked up overall compared to other high performance full frame cameras. Let's break down what underwater photographers need to know. The defining feature of this camera is the new 61 megapixel sensor, and yes, it is definitely worth the hype. Images from this camera are straight up amazing and are packed with some of the richest detail possible from a current camera. This is a new high bar for photo resolution from a current full frame camera, but the really exceptional thing is that you don't have to sacrifice low light performance to achieve it. On most cameras, you're forced to decide between ultimate performance in either high resolution or low light, but with the A7R4, you really get top shelf performance in both of these areas. This camera produces no more noticeable noise or image quality loss at 61 megapixels than images from the 40 plus megapixel A7R3 and Nikon D850. The image quality is so good, you can really push the highlights and the shadows to bring out the most detail in your image without worrying about quality loss, and you have the super sharp 61 megapixel resolution to work with as well, so in terms of ultimate image quality, there's really no compromise. If you plan to use your images for large prints, then this is one of the best possible tools for the job, since your images are going to hold way more detail and look better at larger sizes. In a lot of macro situations, it can be hard to get the housing vertical since the handles are often in the way. Having so much resolution gave us the ability to easily crop shots from horizontal to vertical while still producing a 26 megapixel final image. Sony's taken the focus performance to the next level with the new real-time autofocus tracking. This is a huge upgrade over the previous A7R 3 and this basically matches our personal gold standard for autofocus performance that we find on the Nikon D850 and its 3D autofocus tracking. On the A7R 4 just line up the target, press and hold the AF on button, and the camera's going to track movement of your subject through the frame and focus continuously. If you should lose focus, you can just release the AF on button and lock on again. Shooting with accurate focus is pretty much essential on this camera because with such a high level of resolution, you really need to have that critical focus detail perfectly sharp. If you're off by even just a little bit, it is likely to show up when viewing your images full size. The good news is that the autofocus system works so well, it's basically all you ever need to actually use on this camera. You can just set that once and then forget it for pretty much any shooting situation, underwater or topside. This allows you to spend more time composing and framing the perfect shot, not worrying about whether it's actually in focus or not. A weak spot in the Sony full frame mirrorless family is the lack of native Sony lenses that are well suited for underwater photography. For wide angle, Sony makes some nice 16 to 35 rectilinear zoom lenses that focus fast and produce sharp images, but there really isn't a Sony fisheye lens for really wide scenes. It is technically possible to use a Sony 28 millimeter prime and a fisheye converter, but the distortion that it produces in the corner of the images is basically a deal breaker. On the macro side, we really only have the Sony 90 millimeter macro lens, which produces excellent image quality, but it's pretty slow to focus to the point of being practically useless for macro autofocus, which is going to lead to a lot of missed shots. It's also limited to an aperture of only f22, which is going to make it harder to get more depth of field and to create a darker background in bright shooting conditions. By using the Sigma MC11 mount converter, we're able to adapt Canon lenses and offset the otherwise kind of weak Sony lens selection. Use the Canon 8-15mm fisheye for a true fisheye wide angle experience. The autofocus speed on this lens is at least as fast and accurate as using a native Sony lens, and you get the excellent image quality of Canon L-series optics. 
When shooting macro, use the Canon 100mm. This is going to focus much faster than the Sony 90, and the tracking works really well even on tiny subjects, and you get to that minimum aperture of f32, which allows you to shoot a full stop darker than the Sony 90, so you get more depth of field and you get that darker background, both of which are crucial for good macro. This macro port configuration is a little bit bulkier and it's going to require a slightly larger port setup, but the performance is good enough to make that a fair trade-off. One of the biggest things to consider if looking at the a7R4 versus an SLR is the electronic viewfinder. Electronic viewfinders do bring a lot of cool things to the table. You get to see your image playback and information about the image directly in the viewfinder, which is helpful when the glare on the water is too bright and you can't really see that LCD screen. Or if you're shooting super macro, you don't have to pull your head away and move your whole rig and mess up your shot when you're just trying to look at your playback and get some info. The OLED viewfinder on the a7R4 gets a substantial boost in sharpness from the previous a7R3, and it is bright enough to see easily. One area where an electronic viewfinder can show some weakness is in backlit wide angle scenes. The viewfinder and the LCD screen are going to try to compensate for that super bright background, which is going to leave the background, usually the surface of the water, just completely white and blown out. Your foreground is going to be super dark and shadowed and really difficult to see any detail in. In shots like this one, the sun ball was basically invisible on the surface. It's just all blown out and white. There's really no way to see separation between the grouper and the reef either. You really just have to compose the shot as best you can, working with kind of a silhouette, fire a test shot with your strobes, review that, and then make some adjustments from there. Not being able to see the composition of crucial details can be a serious pain. An optical SLR viewfinder would allow us to see more detail in these areas. One thing an electronic viewfinder does have that no SLR can match is focus peaking. Focus peaking outlines the critical focus area of your image in a highlighted color. So if you have trouble seeing exactly where that precise macro focus is set, then this is an essential feature. Just look for the area that you want to be in focus to get highlighted and fire. You can use focus peaking in either the LCD screen or directly in the viewfinder, and that's something that you just can't do with an optical viewfinder. This is also going to allow you to work with a usable depth of field preview function, which an optical SLR just can't do because that image is going to appear way too dark. Pretty much other than the blown out highlight and lack of shadow detail in sunball and backlit wide scenes, the electronic viewfinder really does look great and has some neat features that could make even an SLR shooter just a little bit envious. We need a fast shooting speed for unpredictable nature scenes underwater, but the Sony a7R4 comes out of the box set up by default for a pretty slow shooting experience. After taking a shot, the default setting on the camera is to have the image pop up on the screen or in the viewfinder automatically, making it necessary for us to have to half press the shutter to clear that playback image before we can actually fire the next shot. This is a pretty major annoyance, but it's something we encounter on a lot of mirrorless cameras, not just this one. It's something that makes a mirrorless camera feel much more like a compact camera performance level than like an SLR. Now you can set the Sony a7R4 to continuous to take advantage of the fast 10 frames per second max shooting speed, but this is likely going to be a little faster than your strobes can actually keep up. We like to just keep it set to single shot with one little custom tweak that allows us to get off as many shots as we can as quick as possible. Go into the menu and just turn off the auto review on your images. This will allow you to shoot as fast as you can snap without interruption or basically as fast as your strobes can keep up. And when you need to review your image, you just hit the playback button and then you can hit it again to clear it. You will have to wait a little bit for your image review because these massive images do take a few seconds to write to your SD card, but since we're not dealing with auto review pop-ups, we can at least just keep firing and capture that split second action while it's going down instead of getting bogged down by auto image review. 
The A7R 4 shoots the same 4K 30p video spec as the previous A7R 3 with pretty vibrant natural colors and really nice dynamic range detail in the shadows and the highlights. Overall, the video results straight out of the camera look pretty solid. The only thing that's a little disappointing is the lack of 4K 60p video. Top of the line full frame cameras from Panasonic and Canon are now shooting at 4K 60p and beyond, so it feels like Sony is a little behind the curve here. If you don't really need 4K, then the high speed 1080 120p footage does look amazing. It allows you to record at 120 frames per second, providing you the ability to slow down your footage to half speed to lengthen your clip and help stabilize it and add a little bit more of that cinematic drama, but you're still outputting a much nicer, super smooth looking video at 60p if you want to. A really cool video feature is the Super 35 or APS-C crop mode. This mode uses a smaller portion of the sensor while still recording full resolution 4K video. In macro shots, this is gonna have the benefit of getting an even tighter shot without having to add an accessory lens, sacrifice image quality, sacrifice depth of field, or even have to move the camera. This really is a competitive edge when shooting super tight macro video, and it makes it a lot easier to just nail that classic wide, medium, tight shot sequence. When shooting wide, you can use the Super 35 mode just like you would a teleconverter on an SLR, but with the added benefit of being able to activate it underwater in the housing in an instant. For ultimate versatility, use the Canon 8 to 15 fisheye so you get a full circular 8mm fisheye, then switch to Super 35 and get a zoom range that's kind of like one of our all time favorites, a Tokina 10 to 17 on a crop sensor camera. The previous A7R 3 had massively improved ambient light custom white balance over the R2, and this same trend carries right on with the A7R 4. There's really no noticeable change to the color performance. It's got three available custom white balance banks with really easy access and simple execution. The white balance performs best at shallow depths, and it looks good in bright ambient light conditions, but it looks best up to about 45 feet deep. At around that depth, the water in the background tends to start shifting towards a more magenta hue that becomes much more difficult to color correct in post, especially the deeper it's shot. There's no question, the Sony a7R 4 is the next evolutionary step in ultimate photo quality. At 61 megapixels, this is gonna produce large prints with tons of razor sharp detail. You can really have the best of both worlds by capturing images with dynamic range detail at least as good as any other current camera, plus way more sharp resolution too. This camera is gonna be your best bet when ultimate image quality is the primary goal. The real-time autofocus tracking can easily compete with the Nikon D850 for our first place pick, and while the D850 will still have a little bit of an advantage when it comes to really challenging super macro autofocus tracking, the A7R 4 gets closer than ever before when using the Canon 100mm lens and the Sigma adapter. We do wish Sony would just develop a proper fisheye lens and a better performing macro lens natively, but thankfully there's good solutions for now by using that adapter and some Canon glass, even if it adds a little bit of bulk and it's not quite as streamlined as a native solution would be. The Super 35 crop mode is a seriously awesome tool for any macro video shooter. This is one of the best and easiest ways to instantly start capturing tight macro footage. For video shooters, whether or not this camera really fits your needs is gonna depend on the type of shooting that you do. It's a little disappointing to not see 4K 60p from Sony yet, and combined with the rather shallow limitations of the custom white balance, it does make this camera a choice for more of a casual video shooter when your real primary interest is photo. If you're looking for the hands down best still image quality and the best resolution, the Sony a7R 4 edges out the competition to be our top pick. To learn more and to build your perfect underwater rig, just give us a call or you can send us an email at sales at backscatter.com. We're 
Always happy to answer every question and every purchase from Backscatter always includes free lifetime tech support. So we'll always be here and happy to help. I'm Robin from Backscatter signing off and happy shooting.